And where are you heading for your lunch? Well, actually, I have a course in between breakfast and lunch. Oh, this is great. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretending that this is my Sunday, and on a Sunday, I have breakfast dessert. <laughs> oh, breakfast dessert. Yeah. I absolutely love that. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Dishing It podcast or if you're new to my dulcet tones, well not so dulcet tones, you're in the right place to hear all about the best places to eat and drink in Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire and the rest of Scotland. On this episode I catch up with Kirsty from Second Home Studio and Cafe which graced the cobbles of Huntley Street at the tail end of last year bringing an accessible art studio space and cafe to Aberdeen. Well overdue if you ask me. I loved art when I was at school. Give me a pen, give me a piece of paper, give me an art set and you could just leave me happily for hours. I've lost touch with that creative side but since the cafe has opened it's almost created a space to reconnect with that part that I don't do that much anymore and yes I don't do it at night time when I'm at the flat but when I go to the cafe it just gives you a reason to just re-engage and just get back to it. It is no secret how much I love this place and it was just inspiring to chat with Kirsty and hear about everything that she's achieved in such a short period of time and my main takeaway from our chat was just that if you put your mind to something, graft away and just keep going for it, you can achieve great things. And it wasn't just inspiration, my food list was booming by the end with plenty of suggestions from Kirsty as she paved her food adventure all across Scotland, which I should say all the businesses mentioned have been linked in the description of this episode so you can follow up with them after you're in for a treat. Right, enough for me, I'll get the show on the road and if you need me, I'll be painting by numbers. Where the flip are my paint pots? Okay everyone, so I'm back on Zoom and coming straight out the waiting room is Kirsty from Second Home Studio and Cafe. Kirsty, welcome to Dishing It, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you, how are you? Yeah, good, all the better for speaking to you tonight. So thanks so much for joining me. Um, when I was starting to plan out Series 2, I th- was trying to think of everyone who I wanted on and you were right at the top of my list. So I'm an oh, avid regular, I mean I've been two times but I'm a regular uh, at <laughs> Second Home, I love coming in. And I always feel at home when I come in for the brunch. But I hope my Zoom setup is as homely as the setup you have at Second Home Aberdeen as well. For all our listeners who are at home, do you want to tell everyone what Second Home Cafe is? Yeah, of course. So Second Home Studio and Cafe is a not-for-profit organisation focusing on making art more accessible. Um, so we are a cafe and open studio space in the city centre of Aberdeen. And basically what that means is you can come in and enjoy coffee, brunch, lunch, and enjoy any of our art materials on site. So we have things like paints and pencils, all your kind of standard stuff, but we also have things like graphic tablets, um, sewing machines, bigger items that you maybe wouldn't necessarily afford or know to buy if you were just starting to explore your creativity. So there's we're kind of a bridge in between you know you and a full creative practice so it's just kind of pushing people to kind of explore that side of themselves a little bit more um we also run workshops and classes um we try to keep them as affordable as possible so that as many people can enjoy them as possible um and kind of in turn this creates a lot of opportunity for our local creatives as well so when when it is. I know it's such a nice place in there like I remember the first time I came in there was obviously you've got your little um the it's like almost like cabinets that fold out into the the tables and you've got those loaded with all the art supplies and little bits and bobs and I used to love art when I was younger and when I was at school and then over the years obviously you lose touch with all that so it's actually nice to have somewhere to go and sit down with that either uh, art book to read about different works of art or to actually sketch and scribble and there was one of, um, I think it was a doodle boot. I think it was 105 things to doodle or something. And I remember looking through it and you look through everyone else's doodles that they've done. It's actually quite a nice little thing to do and to start off your day as well, gets in the right zone. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's something that quite a lot of people have said as well. You know, if they come to a class, they haven't drawn or painted or done anything since school. And it's such a shame that we just lose that because, I mean, obviously my favorite class was art because I'm an artist, but yeah. like, I think everyone enjoyed it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and yeah, to lose that 
that creativity, that little bit of, you know, time that could just be for you is such a shame. And yeah. so I really want to like inspire people to like get that back, you know? Definitely. Mm. It's that sort of thing as well. I think it's people, you don't realize it until you don't do it. And it's just having that little taste of it at the cafe um, makes all worthwhile. It's like the Joanna Basford coloring books. It's like wow. at first when that came in, everyone was like coloring books for adults. Like what the hell? And now look at everyone's bloody got one. <laughs> like I've even got one here somewhere, I think. <laughs> There's one um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. See, it's everywhere. <laughs> um, so how did how did Second Home come about? Where Where did it all begin? Well, it kind of, it started when... I was traveling when I was 20. Um, I booked a one-way flight to Australia and um, little 20-year-old Kirsty didn't know what to do with her life. <laughs> so yeah. Naturally, I went to Australia to <laughs> try and figure it out. Um, I was very lucky to be able to do that. And um, yeah, so I was, I was wandering around Sydney one day. This is probably my first week of being there and I was lost and I found this shopping center and I just kind of wandered in hoping to kind of find my bearings you know shopping centers have all sorts of different exits yep. so, oh god maybe if I go in here I'll find where I am and I was kind of wandering about and I could hear this piano coming from somewhere and it was really intrigued so I just kind of followed it and it took me up to the top floor which happened to be this space called Brand X um and it turned out it was an artist studio, which had been rented out for six months, which had been awarded to six different artists. Okay. So they were all kind of practicing in this space. There was this big collaborative exhibition that you could kind of add to. And there was this room full of art materials and this piano, um, which anyone could just go in and use. And I was so, so inspired and so touched by it. And, you know, Aberdeen has gotten a lot better since then. This is a good, like, eight years ago now. Um, but I just knew that I really, really needed to bring something like this back to Aberdeen. And, um, yeah, so eight years later, here we are. <laughs> here we are. And was it a smooth process getting all set up and getting everything off the ground? Or was it one of those things, could you, a kind of slow burner to get things through? It was definitely a slow burner. Um, so I have an art degree, um, but through my degree, I really didn't learn anything about business at all. Um, I did fashion communication. So, you know, I learned a lot through my degree, but nothing about business. So I kind of, I didn't have the resources to go back to university and learn. Um, so I just kept working, kept doing my full-time thing. Um, and every night I would come back and learn just a little bit about business. I would look up what it meant to be a limited company versus sole trader mm -hmm. versus um, a CIC, which is what we ended up being. Um, learn about all my responsibilities and how to manage and how to, you know, build a team and <laughs> did all my like food hygiene and barista training and just basically did everything, everything I could to make sure that when I eventually got there, that it was to the best of my ability at the time. And I mean, I'm not saying I know everything because I definitely, definitely don't. There's <laughs> been things I need to learn on the go. But yeah, I, I, you know, I gave myself the best possible start and um, everything else I can just kind of learn on the go. So. Yeah, exactly. And you kind of touched on it there, but so was owning your own business part of your, even before you kind of were inspired to do kind of second home when you're at uni, was that part of your plan to maybe end up having your own thing or was it just kind of see what happened? Just see what happened really. Um, I never thought I would own a business. Um, this is such like a weird turn of events for me. Um, yeah, I just kind of, it was never really in my plans. Um, to run a business I didn't I don't even know what I thought I was going to do back then I think at one point I maybe wanted to be a primary school art teacher mm -hmm. um which was fun it's everybody's favorite teacher yeah it, it definitely is yeah <laughs> yeah and I did some work experience in it and it was really good fun um but I think yeah I kind of decided that I didn't want to do that and I was just very lucky to to have that kind of inspiration moment to be like this this is what I want this mm -hmm. is my purpose so yeah oh, 
and we're so glad that you did definitely (laughs) I know because I I feel like with I mean so it was was it in the middle of the pandemic you opened or just before pretty much in the middle (laughs) in the middle but I mean I mean well from my perception anyway like the warmth is there for you guys like there always is such a nice buzz about it that when every time you're in I mean it just feels like it's a nice little community that you go to you've got your regulars coming in you've got well you're there and then you've got like your team as well smiles and just kind of serve it it's just a nice place to be um and I know like at the start the um you kind of had a rough patch with social media and things um with kind of getting and I've been there as well with you just start to hate it like you just get a, a really bad kind of vibe with it did that take away from the sparkle of starting up your own business um no I don't think so um the thing that kind of took away from it for me um was the fact that I was working so hard to open the business so this is um kind of November time once we'd opened I was so burnt out from just trying to open it that I Mm -hmm. couldn't enjoy it once I was open because I was exhausted yeah um and so I think I mean looking back on it I maybe would have just like taken more time to open so that I didn't have to do work from like 6 a.m until like 2 a.m in the morning you know like dragging my partner into it and like all my friends like literally the night before like we were writing the sign we were like doing the last bits and bobs you know so I think the burnout was the thing and I mean it was maybe also that that meant I wasn't enjoying the social media aspect of it it was just one of those things that I was just so tired that I just couldn't there was no joy in like the thing I was doing so um but the social media thing I think I'm quite an analog person like you know I prefer taking photos on film I prefer Mm -hmm. speaking to people face to face yeah having those genuine interactions whereas you know social media by its nature demands that you are on your phone and I mm-hmm. really don't like it yeah um I feel like it takes away from my time with my partner or with like mm-hmm. my friends or my family yeah. or whatever or from my alone time as well because you just get sucked into it yeah definitely um so for, yeah it is fair to say that for a while I maybe wasn't enjoying it but it's um more about finding the time to carve out for yourself rather than like getting burnt out with everything including social yeah. media so yeah that's like the biggest takeaway from it I would say good and do you feel like you've got a, a positive uh, relationship with social media now yeah I do yeah I think so. um I think the key to it is to generally just be yourself <laughs> I think yeah I'm a little bit daft and um, we're all like a little bit daft it's all good. we're all mad yeah. like just a little bit weird but like I guess I own a creative business and like I, I need to just be myself so that everybody else feels free to be themselves around me as well um and I think with social media it's a really good platform obviously to share what other people are doing as well so like you know it's just that little extra community connection that I get yeah. from it as well so yeah I do yeah. I have a much better relationship with it now so Dude. I know I think it's that thing I think the minute you figured out what it is that is bugging you with it that's because for me it was um like I'm vet I do marketing as a full-time job anyway so like insights and things are like my day pretty much but with my own personal blog it got to a phase of obviously doing it more so I was like driven by data all the time and like why are people not looking at it why are people not engaging blah blah blah. and then obviously you see other people's social accounts and they're booming and you're like oh my god like why do I even bother and then like soon I because I've always been a firm believer in it's not about likes it's just about like people seeing it that's kind of what it's about and the minute like thank god Instagram rolled out the hiding like count and stuff because that's been like the best thing for me not seeing what I'm getting and what not seeing what other people are getting as well just helps me massively just do it because you actually just want to post not because oh seven o'clock on a Wednesday that's when they say to post (laughs) this gets exhausting does it 
yeah you're totally right and it's good because I always I feel like with your side of social media like the love is there from everyone and I imagine on your end it's quite nice to be getting all the kind of supportive messages and seeing people coming in and sharing it on their stories and sharing their experiences with everyone else which is a must be a really nice thing to see yeah it's really wholesome it's really yeah. nice um, always good to have a cheerleader uh, yeah for sure <laughs> and I think like you know social media is really good um but it's nice when you see other people sharing it because it's almost like a recommendation from a friend, which yes. there's like nothing in the world. Like, Definitely. You know. So yeah, appreciate it. Good, good. And speaking of cheerleaders, um, I have to note that your mum must be your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> She's like, it was a post you did the other day um, of, I think you're shooting the window and I think she's eating a bagel or she is she's doing something I remember I was like I need to I'm gonna ask this question because like it, every, like the two times I've been in she's been in as well and it just she's like your member of staff it's great oh my god yeah plus my little mom she <laughs> is always there she she'll jump in if I need it she will pick up things from the shops for me great. she does she does my washing for a second home specifically. great person to have great person to have <laughs> But only because both me and my chef, who is also called Percy, we both have cats. So it just means that like everything yes. inside part of cat hair, even when yeah. it's so, yeah. so it's easier. Um, <laughs> so yeah, bless my little mum. She's always there. Um so yeah, I mean, if someone is talking to you at the till and you're like, who is this weird lady? It's just my mum. It'll be my mum. <laughs> <laughs> so my parents just Liz. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Um, and you were mentioning that kind of Aberdeen has moved um, a lot in the past eight years or so since you went traveling and everything. And there has been a real culture boom over the past maybe like five years, I want to say. Um, like we've had new art, which now conveniently looks into your garden, which is great. Um, <laughs> the cafe garden, not, not your actual home garden. Um, and obviously the revamped art gallery, look again, all these things happening. And I think you you guys play like a big role in that. And as you said, like making art accessible for everyone, like do, doesn't matter if you can draw, if, if you like, can't even do it, like it's fine, like you can still come and get involved. Um, what do you think is next for the, the culture scene in the city? I think what's next, or what I would like to see anyway. Um, I mean, I know you mentioned that we've got really like big things going on like new art which is amazing the revamped um art gallery which is just so beautiful and the fact that it's now award-winning and it's got the british art show and yeah it's doing amazing and all of that should really be celebrated but what i'd really like to see is aberdeen coming together to celebrate our kind of smaller makers and artists and the people that sell things because you know these are people within our community that are trying to do this either as their full-time job or, or otherwise as their side hustle or whatever yeah. but it you know Aberdeen's one of these really weird places that it's like it's the third biggest city in Scotland mm -hmm. but you always know someone that knows someone it's so got this the like tiniest yeah the biggest yeah. the third biggest but the tiniest yeah I know exactly what you mean so small it's like this little village like you always know someone that kind of knows someone and like we still have this opportunity to make Aberdeen is more of a community, especially now that the kind of oil industry is like kind of dissipating. It's making space yeah. for us to kind of reconnect. Um, and I'd really like for us to kind of be supporting these small independent makers while we're doing that. So um, yeah, I would like to see, I would like to see us come together a little bit more now. Yeah. Um, and whether that's celebrating these kind of bigger things or these smaller things, you know, like, I just want us to come together. <laughs> pull it all together into one community. Yes, Best way sure. to put it, definitely. And um, you touched on it at the start, but how important do you think it is to create like an inclusive art environment? And yeah. um, whether it's at Second Home or just in general? So important. Um, I mean, art, art is really for everyone. Um, it should be, you know, um, so it's really important whether that's, you know, kind of accessibility issues in terms of money, um, in terms of income or in terms of literal physical abilities as well. I think it's really important that especially 
in larger spaces they consider um what disabled people are going to see um and in terms of inclusivity as well i think i, I might be generalizing as part of the community but like people in the lgbtq plus community are generally a bit more creative so being more inclusive especially of um sort of trans and gender non-binary folks is always going to be really important because that art needs to be accepted and needs to be more mainstream and i don't i don't i can't understand why it's not why our galleries are still predominantly white and male mm -hmm. um when women have been making art and queer folk have been making art for the same amount of time so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing how much it filters into everything. Um, like that point there, like, why is it only white men? An art gallery, I guess you only see it on face value when you go in sometimes. You uh, that because you saying that there, I've never actually thought of that before, and now it's so obvious. Like, it's it's one of those things, and it, it, it should be a well rounded, yeah, for sure. Definitely. definitely. Um, yeah, I think you're, you're right as well. I mean, like, you wouldn't necessarily go into Aberdeen Art Gallery and by looking at the, na the names of the artists you might not think oh you know like that's all men and it's not because you know this Aberdeen Art Gallery following their revamp have actually done a good bit more to kind of balance yeah. it out a little bit um, especially with including some of our local artists they've, they've actually done quite a good job in terms of gender equality um, but that's not you know, not necessarily the case for everyone. Um, there's a really good group called Art Girl Rising mm -hmm. um, that you should follow. There's some really good statistics on there um, about, you know, women in art um, and the gender kind of pay gap that comes with that as well. Um, and yeah, so it's really good for a source of information. Definitely, I'll put a link to that in the bio of the podcast as well. I know, a long way to go still. Like you, th you think sometimes that we're nearly there, but we're not even scratching it yet. So that takes us to present day. And there's been yoga, hen parties, celebrity guests, and obviously art classes, a lot of them um, at the, the cafe. What's What's been your highlight so far? Oh, God. If you can pick one, if you can pick there's one. so many. <laughs> um, oh, you know this. I'll say two things. So, I mean, obviously... Cheating already. Cheating already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, the, the biggest one has been having Emma Willis and Adrian Don do it. Like, yeah, I, I had a feeling that might be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> what? It was so crazy. Um, it was such a busy day. And, yeah, I mean, it's really cool that they were there. But um, I was just really happy to be supporting our lovely goods. Um mm -hmm in their sort of journey and um yeah that that day was just so crazy and do you want to um anyone who's listening might uh, who maybe missed this but yeah emma emma willis and ag do do visited um to host a show i believe but do you want to kind of give everyone a kind of a background to kind of what kind of happened that day yeah of course so um AB from Our Lovely Goods um, approached me and asked if she could use our space for a pop-up shop, to which I agreed, said it's totally fine, and um, it turned out it was for this TV show called Emma and AJ Get to Work, um, which meant that Emma was and AJ <laughs> were going to be there. And um, so they hosted a pop-up shop on Sunday, kind of set it all up, and yeah, they they were just selling candles and I had made a special breakfast for everyone um, ended up teaching Emma Willis how to make coffee yes. um, <laughs> <you know. laughs> like what is my life how did that happen <laughs> um and yeah it was just so crazy it was such a busy day um and yeah I'm just so chuffed with how it all went that was just honestly highlight of the year like I'm calling it <laughs> yeah how far how far advanced did you find out that it was for the tv show uh, probably a week a week god uh, yeah and um, so yeah it was just just so crazy so I remember just, seeing it on my um it's like just usual like going through instagram just going down and I was like oh, there's Emma Willis and then I was like 
That's Evan Willis at second home, Aberdeen. <laughs> what the hell? And I was like, oh, it must be someone who looks like her. Like that, that can't be her. And then I went on. I was like, she's posted on her own page. She's posted on her own page. <laughs> That's, it's amazing. Yeah, so crazy. Um, so I mean, that was that was a really good highlight for us, obviously. But to bring it back down to like real life, <laughs> and not crazy celebrity visits. <laughs> the highlight of kind of running second home in general is seeing regulars. So like yeah. yourself, or like you know James, who comes in for his flat white every like second day or whatever. He gave us a little plan of like um seeing artists from the crate community just coming in and like using our space and just getting to know everyone has just been so 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 nice so that's like you know that's like what it's all about for me that's like my highlight so. oh amazing and you touched on the um of the creatives using the space to kind of sell their work and things and I know you've got uh I think is your exhibition you've got up just now coming to an end maybe the one you've got up it is yeah it is so... we've got one lined up after someone else coming in I do, yeah. I mean, they're lined up until April next year. Oh, <laughs> yes. Look out, Aberdeen Art Gallery. Watch out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so our next one coming up is Stephanie Summers. Um, she will be hosting an exhibition with us for another six weeks. And then after that, it's actually our birthday exhibition, which is very exciting. Ooh. So we're... I'm hoping to kind of host one that's going to be about, like we said earlier, about childhood and, you know, using art as like a sense of play yeah. and like just unleashing a bit of creativity. So I hope to kind of make it about that. Oh, and that'll run. Um, it kind of all ties in nicely because it's second home's birthday, then it's my birthday. And then it's like the date that we opened as well. So it's kind of like our little birthday sandwich in there yeah um so yeah that's um that's gonna be good so yeah it's the last week to see a lot of ferguson's exhibition um and yeah we we sell a whole bunch of stuff in our retail space yeah. so we've got um necklaces from marianne baxter we've got uh mimi hamill's candles we've got earrings from rook and claw which are really popular um, and on top of that, we've got things like our own art kits that we make um, and like little greetings cards and stuff as well. So it's really, really great. I love the greetings cards. I actually forgot to buy. I just remember that there. I was like, I meant to buy those for I left last time. I'll be back again. That's another <laughs> another excuse to come back. <laughs> <laughs> if I order coffee and breakfast on the side, I, this happens is what you got to do. Yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> um, and what do you think, what do you think's next for a second home? What? What's the next milestone do you think it's going to be? Well, in kind of exciting news, um, we are going to be moving downstairs in the building. Oh, Ooh, um, this is exciting. Yes, so the it's basically just a, a whole big move within the building that we're in. It's a collaborative building. If you if you know listeners haven't heard of the gym, um, there's a bunch of different female-led businesses in there. Um, including Mimi Hamill, um, including my studio resident, Colour Flux Art, um, Swish Swish Fish is in there. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff going on. But basically the hairdresser on the ground floor is moving to a unit next door, which means the ground floor is free, so I'm going to take it. Um, hey. It has, I know I'm so excited, it has an extension at the back, which means we're going to have a bigger kitchen, which means we can do more oh, stuff. Amazing. Um, Obviously, we'll be closer to the garden, which is better. I was going to say that must have uh, good for the legs, but must be <laughs> like on a busy day, you must be like, oh, why did we have the garden downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, um, like, it doesn't bother me day to day, but it wasn't until tapas night that I was just like, oh, yeah. This is the worst idea in the yeah. world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. But it was good fun. So, oh, amazing. So, you won't be on the top floor anymore. You'll be on the bottom oh, amazing it's such so ace i know i can't wait i'm so excited so that'll be our next big thing that's in january next year so um and then apart from that i think we're just gonna keep going the way that we are keep kinda, going yeah just stay stay put for a little while. oh that's such good news so you've got the you have the birthday celebrations you have the moving out celebrations you have the moving in celebrations <laughs> oh you like to keep busy. 
I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing news. And before we talk about food from all across Scotland, let's talk about your food specifically. What's your go-to item on the menu if you were to sit in at the cafe? Um, my go-to item is actually one that I insisted was on the menu, which is our banh mi. Um, so it's a vegan banh mi. Um, if you don't know, it's a, a Vietnamese sub-style sandwich in a French baguette. Um, so traditionally, if you were having it with meat, it would have pate and all sorts of different meats in it and some pickles and some vegetables. But our one is vegan, as I said, so it has um, our homemade hummus, it has um, marinated tofu, our house-made kimchi and salad and some peanuts and some coriander and it's just so fresh and so delicious and I pretty much eat it every day for my lunch. <laughs> I never get bored of it. That's a great lunch. My mouth is actually watering. Think about that. And it's reminded me I need to go in for lunch. I've not tried out lunch yet. So oh, that's what I'll do when I get my cards. Excellent. <laughs> Amazing. That sounds so good. I've not I've actually never heard of that before. So that's yeah. a new one for the list. Can't wait to try. Okay, right. Let's get into the the main show-stopping bit of the podcast um so I set you the task of thinking up your most epic food safari around Scotland and you had the very good idea of flipping on its head and changing it from a starter main dessert to a breakfast lunch and dinner which I've actually ended up changing the format completely giving everyone the option to do that if they want to, if they don't want to sit down, because it's a very good idea to give more people promotion. So um, thank you for that. I'll give you commission at some point, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> if, I, if I get paid from this one day, who knows? Um, so, yes, yeah, so you're going to go through your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, and um, your top drink that you're always dreaming of and that you need to recommend. So over to you. The floor is yours. So we are starting off on our little Scottish food safari by going for breakfast at Cafe Strange Fruit in Glasgow. Classic. It is so beautiful in there. Um, it's just very chilled, very laid back, very cool. It's in Shawlands. It's like a really cool part of Glasgow. So um, I used to go there quite a lot when I lived in Glasgow. Um, my friend lived in Shawlands, so it, it was always staying over at her house on a Saturday night and <laughs> going uh, for breakfast uh, on Sunday. <laughs> um so yes many many hangovers. <laughs> yeah. Oh I suppose we'll have to go there for breakfast again. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> um, but yeah I always ended up having their pancake specials. It was always um always something different every time I went in. And I think one of my favorite ones that I ever had had a vanilla panna cotta on the side. Ooh. like that is the level of effort that they go to you know yeah that's like, exactly what I thought effort like that effort, is my head, like, side. it's just mind-blowing and you know as someone that enjoys food obviously and runs a cafe and knows the work that has to go into that to make a panna cotta just to go on pancakes is a level of effort that I just really appreciate so Yes, I would very, very much recommend there. There's always a wait time to get in, but because you're on Pollockshaws Road, um, it's worth having a little wander up and visiting a pedicure, which is a plant shop. Mm -hmm. the little plant. Mm -hmm. And there's a little pottery shop across the road from a pedicure called Wild Gorse as well, which is also very cute. You can pick up a little plant pot for your new plant. Let's look at that little shopping trip. <laughs> yes right. exactly and they'll give you a phone when your table is ready and then you can always go to breakfast so <laughs> oh, great and so would it be the panna cotta um, pancakes you'd order is that what you would go for do you think well they change every time okay. so um I can't remember what else was on them I think it was passion fruit and a vanilla panna cotta and some sort of crumb and I'm a really big fan of a crunch in something soft lovely I'm a, I'm a textures person yes um, me too. but okay. yeah but genuinely it doesn't matter what their pancake special is I would eat it <laughs> every day <laughs> so. that's when you know it's a, a place is a good place to eat is when you actually don't have a thing that you just know the pancakes are good so whatever they've got on them that day that's what you're having I'll have it love Ooh. it yeah. and where are you heading for your lunch well actually I have a course in between breakfast and lunch oh 
this is great. <laughs> uh, so I'm pretending that this is my Sunday and on a Sunday I have breakfast dessert. <laughs> oh, breakfast dessert. Yeah. I absolutely love that. <laughs> So for breakfast dessert, I'm going to 12 Triangles on Brunswick Street in Edinburgh. Um, they serve the most delicious coffee. It is William & Johnson's, which is a roasters and leaf. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really fresh. It obviously hasn't traveled very far to get to 12 Triangles. Um, again, it's one of those places that you just rock up and whatever is there is there, you just eat it. <laughs> so, yeah. But they do the most divine pastries. And the last time I had um just a really fudgy really good brownie um and it was right before it was a way to drive home to Aberdeen as well so it was just like the right little perk that I needed yeah. and yeah so it has a special place in my heart <laughs> oh nice okay Bre breakfast dessert breakfast dessert I love that you should you should make a <laughs> breakfast breakfast dessert section of your menu I should shouldn't I you should <laughs> Make, get, a, get a copyright on it already don't let anyone else. I'll tell you when this is going out so you can get the jump start or like don't worry <laughs> won't release it to the world <laughs> okay amazing nice with chopped triangles this is what I love about doing this podcast is that like I know Aberdeen Aberdeenshire like food bits I know quite well a lot of places I haven't been to yet but it's like the Glasgow Edinburgh's other places like I've not really dipped my toe in so it's really good to get a nice booming list of recommendations which is fantastic yeah. um so where are you going for your lunch or is there a is there a breakfast Sorry. I don't know what comes after dessert but <laughs> no with <it's> lunch now <laughs> <laughs> So for lunch, I'm going to Gallery 48 in Dundee. Yeah. So Gallery 48 is a delicious little tapas place. Um, I can't remember the name of the street, but it's kind of up in a bit of Dundee that I'd never really been to until last year. Um, so this was right after the first lockdown had kind of eased off a little bit. My mom and I were going to the V&A. Um, she'd never been so I took her down to the V&A and um, we went to Gallery 48 for lunch and it is just the most beautiful tapas I think I've ever had like even something as simple as a Spanish omelette like when it's good beautiful yeah. like really nice and they've got a really good selection of gin as well if you're drinking um, there's also a very big mural on the wall by Joanna Craig which I really appreciate it's really colourful um, and Joanna Craig was actually the first artist that we had as our exhibitor in Second Home. So it's oh, really nice little full Comes around full circle, love it. <laughs> nice. And what would be like your top tapas things you've had there that you would need to have again? Oh, uh, well, definitely the tortilla. I mean, that's a, that's a classic. And they had this goat cheese. I think it was, a, it was, I think it was supposed to be a salad, but this is my favorite kind of salad is when it was just a big wheel of goat's cheese and like pea shoots. <laughs> Oh, that's a great salad. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cheese. Um, so yeah, so I, uh, I was really appreciative of that. Um, and what else did we have? There was almost definitely patatas bravas on there. No, it was croquettes. Oh my God, there was these delicious little croquettes that came with this kind of tomato -y marinara sauce thing. Oh, so oh, delicious. Nice. Yes. I love tapas and that's a thing in Aberdeen we're missing that just now are we tap I mean Cafe Harmony I think they still do tapas oh my god and, and obviously tapas. you had your tapas thing as well and um, which is good but yeah that's a thing like we don't have much off in the city yeah is... definitely um but yeah Cafe Harmony I mean oh they're just so good every time I go we end up kind of have I mean I love tapas so we end up having just like the Harmony Earth board and like ordering a couple of different things as well um and it's just so delicious like I absolutely love it in there um it's unfortunately not made my list this time but it was damn close because that hummus divine next to none to do to it, but it tastes like bloody garlic bar it's so delicious oh that's that's my sort of hummus anything with garlic yeah <laughs> oh I love it great and where are you going for dinner um, for dinner, I'm going to Holy Cow in Edinburgh. Holy Cow. Holy Cow, yes. So it's a, a cafe by day, it's vegan. Um, and then by night, they serve their own little dinner menu. So the last time I went, it was just like the most miserable bloody day in Edinburgh. 
it was just the kind of day where you need to like get somewhere quickly so you can huddle mm-hmm. up and just yeah. eat something warm. So we found Holy Cow and I had the tofu burger, which was um, Vietnamese. So it was this marinated tofu um, and like this peanut apple slaw. Oh, just so divine, so beautiful. Honestly, I, I must have, have a thing for Vietnamese food. <laughs> but like, yeah. It used to be a theme. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, maybe I need to do like Vietnamese tapas. <laughs> be like, do it. <laughs> yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> maybe in like January. Yeah. All together. This would be Vietnamese tapas. Um, but yeah, their their burgers are really good in there. Uh, the person I was with really enjoyed their meal as well. Um, it was really nice service. Uh, their cakes I couldn't manage any cake because my burger was massive um, but yeah it all looked amazing so um, it was one of those things that I tried to recreate in lockdown as well that peanut slaw um, and I only ever managed it like once so whatever they do it's very delicious so. <laughs> you've got the secret and what was the the burger stack like was it like a big brioche bun was it like loaded with heaps of kind of fillings how, how was it looking no, it was um, it was kind of more of a sloppy thing because it had, you know, the tofu doesn't really like hold its own kind of thing because mm-hmm. it was two two slices and then the, the slaw on top. So, and because it was marinated in so much sauce, it would just was one of those like really messy, like really nice eats. Um, I think it probably had a brioche bun. I don't know. Um, like it was gone. It was gone in seconds. It didn't have time to. It was gone. <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> so. Can't beat a burger. Oh, really can't. Nice. Oh, amazing. And I mean, since you did a breakfast dessert, I feel like I'm just going to put you on the spot and ask you for a dessert location. I think <laughs> if anywhere comes to mind quickly. <laughs> um. All right. Let me have a think. It's okay. I can cut out the pause. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. I'm glad. If it takes it, if it takes it, I will. We'll make it. Add, like it was only two seconds. <laughs> still be here. <laughs> Can I say something that I like haven't even had, but I've been thinking? Oh yeah, go for it. Yeah. For a very long time. So I follow Brian McLeish on Instagram, who mm-hmm. is a chef at Moonfish, Fish, yeah. and their banana and burnt white chocolate thing is something that just needs to be in my life right now, and I've just mm-hmm. not had the chance to go yet. But I'm coming for you, Moonfish. It looks insane. I hate bananas and even I want to eat it. It's the power of Moonfish. (laughs) Talent. Um, And what's a a drink that you need to have in your hand as well? So my favourite drink is actually made right here in Aberdeen. It is the Pink Orchid from Orchid Classic. Obviously it was uh, made here by a local person, which I just really love. Um, it's so creamy and so sweet and just delicious. And I've had so many nice times in Orchid as well, that it just kind of had to had to make my list. You had to be that one. Kind of represent, so so is, is, a, is a pink orchid a take on a white Russian or I'm, I'm, um, not, I'm not, don't think I've seen this one before. No, it kind of tastes like, you know, the Haribo like harp sweets. Oh yeah, uh huh. Like Ooh, delicious. Adding that to the top of the drink list. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, that's a booming list of recommendations, and you've covered all the cities. I uh, yeah, I think I have. Yeah. from Inverness, but I mean, Inver- yeah, Inverness. We'll get there one day, Inverness. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry we'll give you a shout out soon. Um, amazing. So. A new thing I'm doing for this uh, series of the podcast is um, getting each guest to pick their feel-good song. So every time I'm in um, Second Home, you, your playlist is always smooth and just got the best songs. I mean, the first time I was in, it was Fleetwood Mac. And I remember I walked in and I was like, oh, this is my place. <laughs> this is, I'm home. So what is your feel-good song that does a trick to pick you up and you can listen to endlessly? So... I picked this one because it reminds me of Second Home when we kind of first opened. Um, It was one of those things, it's on like a, you know, the Spotify general kind of playlist. There's one called Your Kitchen Stereo, which is one for just like kind of popping about too. Uh And there's a song on there called Best Worst Year by Strap. And 
it's so happy and just so like dancey and every time it comes on I'm like do you do you like every time I can't help myself um and it yeah it reminds me that like you know yes there was a lockdown and like you know I have it was it was a tough year for everybody I'm sure but like during that year I also managed to open a second home which has been my dream for yeah. ever long. um and you know a lot of things personally went right for me as well so it really was like my best worst year so yeah, yeah. Very fitting. I love it. Oh, amazing. Well, that takes us to the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for being my first guest to record with for series two. Um, I really love that summary right at the end of the best worst year. Very fitting song. And you have done amazing things so far in this short period of time. You're not even at a year yet and you've achieved so much. So I can't wait to see what 2022 brings with the, the new fit and everything. And yeah, I'll be back. I'll probably be back in this weekend. Amazing. I will yeah. see you <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. No, oh, thank you. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Honestly, if you haven't been to Second Home Cafe and Studio, wrong way around, always get the wrong way around. If you haven't been to Second Home Studio and Cafe, you have to go. It is just such an amazing place to be and hearing of the news that they are going to be opening on the ground floor, extending out to the garden. And making it a bigger space is music to my ears. The food is amazing, coffee is amazing, staff are so so friendly as you can tell by Kirsty's interview there and yeah I honestly can't recommend this place highly enough. It's a place just now that I recommend to everyone when they ask where to go for brunch right at the top of the list so you need to go check it out. The limits are endless with this place and when you go in you'll just be taken aback with the amazing facilities they've got and just how they're making art accessible for all so that takes us to the end of the podcast thank you very much for listening i will be back next week with another guest stay safe eat well and speak soon i'll see you next week or i'll speak to you next week bye